Hi everyone, Blair and I have been asked many, many times about traveling with pets. And today I'm going to talk about a number of things that we use to make our lives easier and kind of how we do the pet travel deal. So, If you're not aware, we have Piper, our seven-year-old golden retriever. Well, seven and a half now. She's getting a little gray on her face and we're kind of sad about that. And we have Scout, a cat. I have no idea what kind of cat she is. She's just a black cat with a little bit of white right here. Uh, Blair's had her for 12 years and some change, maybe. So those are our two animals that we travel with. And just so you know, everything that I'm going to discuss today that is available on there, I will put a product link to Amazon for all these pet things. Uh, I'll put that in the in the video down below, and it'll be on our Amazon page from this point forward. But this basket is Piper's bag of toys. We have some other stuff I'll show you up top above the fridge now, but it's just squeaker toys, chew toys, a rope, uh, bones, various things like that that we get her along the way. She had this little cool RV, but she de-stuffed it, so it's no longer that. Um, this is a ball that we feed her with sometimes. So on days where she doesn't get mental stimulation, or what we think is enough mental stimulation, we'll feed her in here. We put the same amount of food in here. It goes in her bowl, and she knows this thing around and pieces of food drop out. So. It takes her 30 minutes or so to eat from this bowl, whereas it takes her about 30 seconds to eat from her bowl, uh, which is really nice and some mental stimulation. And this has been in my family for a long time because my last dogs had this thing too. So it's really cool to see it coming along. Speaking of animals and food and things of that nature, um, we have room for Scout's food and what little bit of litter we have and puppy pads inside of a cabinet in the kitchen. For Piper's food, we typically don't buy the smallest bags because you pay twice as much for it. So we get an 18 or 30 pound bag and we keep it in the vehicle here and we keep a, a two gallon Ziploc bag full. We just open this thing and pour it into a few two gallon Ziploc bags uh, so they can maintain some freshness. And we get this delivered to us via Amazon about once a month. And it's about the same price as you would pay at... Um, Pet smart. She gets the puppy, or sorry, Purina Pro Plan Adult Complete Essentials because she's an adult dog with gray hair. In our pantry up here, we have puppy pads, scouts food, and a bag of litter will fit up there as well. So that's where we keep it out of the way. Piper has also had a number of puzzles, food puzzles uh, as, throughout the years. And every time she masters one level, we go up another level. Uh, but she's defeated all the ones that we can purchase. Um, so we get pass them on to families. But you can see here on the screen what some of those puzzles have looked like. This is called an Uproot Clean. This thing is fantastic. It cleans off the rug. It cleans off the bedspread. It cleans off the pillows. It cleans off the carpet in the car. It's such a wonderful deal. Good as new. And this is our old rug that stays outside. It's wet right now from the rain. But this thing still cleans even though it's wet. So this scrape oh, sorry scout. <laughs> this just scrapes off. This pillow is not that bad, but you can see maybe the hair on this one, which is horrible. Now, going against the grain of the cloth it can be problematic because it will snag on some things. So, I have to go with with the grain of the pillow, so to speak. And you see how much that pulls off. Now, what's really going to blow your mind is this comforter. Now, it doesn't look like there's any cat hair on here, but. That's about one week's worth of hair. So we go through, we swiffer, clean the pillows, clean the sheets, clean the bedspreads, uh, and clean the car out too when Piper's in there with the car with her, her sprinkles of love. Uh, this is a Furminator, the newest edition of the Furminator, and it's very good for. I mean, this particular one is for large dogs with long hair. Uh, this works wonderful on Scout and Piper, so I like to Furminate them both once, sometimes twice a week. It works out really great. Toenail clippers for Piper, which she absolutely hates. Uh, a standard brush that brushes out. So when you're fermenting, you kind of have to pull the hair off almost every time you coat it through her hair. Uh, but this brush does a pretty good job too, and it's it's not 
it's sharp enough, but not so sharp that it hurts. This is a rechargeable light collar. So in the winter time, when it's dark outside early in the mornings and dark outside early in the afternoon, if we wanted to let her run through the field somewhere in a safe environment, we could put this collar on her and you can see wherever she is around the woods. So this is a really cool device. These bins are exactly the same bins as we have up here in our cabinetry and in our bedroom in our cabinetry that we keep our clothes in. So I have one just for shorts, one just for t-shirts, one just for socks and underwear, one for whatever the things are. We all we have them in all of our cabinets here. We have them in our pantry up here for cups and things like that. So these these are baskets are from Target. Um, we've had them in many of our RVs. So really cool stuff here. These are just kind of the toys and stuff that we use to clean and, and get get them going. So other things for Piper. This is a Mountain Smith dog bed. It's pretty large. But this thing folds up really nicely and compresses into a compressible sack, which is in our camping bin right now, because this is something we take with us when we go camping, backpack camping with Piper, because it cinches down really small and it can fit anywhere. We keep it on this uh, seat cushion here quite a bit, because when we leave leave the house, this is Piper's sit space. So she can sit up here and look out the windows for us and uh, know that when we come to the door, this is where she's always going to be sitting. And we just we keep this up here to keep some dirt and debris and toenails off of our couch here. But that's Piper's bed. Sometimes we just lay it in the floor. Sometimes it goes in the back of the truck. Sometimes it goes camping. But that's kind of our go anywhere dog bed. Speaking of uh, cat claws and dog claws on the ultra leather that comes on your Airstream, uh, this is our second one. And the the ultra leather that comes in the International and the Flying Cloud and the Caravel are pretty similar to each other, the, the, the leather feel. The Globetrotter has a completely different texture, and the Classic has also a different texture of, of leather stuff. So from our experience, Scout does, has been declawed, or the tendons cut. She still has them, but she can't engage them. Now, her back feet do still work. In our fifth wheels, the leather sofas in those, both of them, we were able to see cat claw marks from when she would hop up there and dig her feet in. On the Airstream, both this one and the last one, we have not noticed any claw marks from her. So the leather is pretty durable. Scout gets up in this window right here at the lookout and enjoys that. But that's really the only spot she gets up. She does go up on the couch on occasion. And she misses quite often. She's not the most agile cat I've ever met. But even so, with her trying to dig her feet in, we haven't noticed the claw marks in these leather sofas like we did in our fifth wheels, which had a much cheaper variant of it. So that's been one something that people have asked many times over. Piper's claws are big and thick and very, <laughs> very, very tough and hurt. Uh, but as many times as she hops up on the sofa, we've never had an issue with that. It's just hair and dirt from her. Uh, cleaning devices, we have a Swiffer brand duster here. So these things dust, and you can throw these away when they get dirty. But dusting off the cabinet does a really good job of picking up pet hair. And then our Swiffer broom uh, with these specific pet hair super duty things. This this is a lifesaver here to keep the hair out of the floor. So we have a normal broom. I go through a normal broom sweep, and then I go through a Swiffer. And I still get stuff on the Swiffer, even after doing it two or three times. But And then we have a little tiny dustpan here to sweep up and dump it outside. But those are some of the cleaning products that we have. Up above our refrigerator here in this cabinet, we have some extra. Uh, these are multivitamins. They taste like fish. We call them her breath mints. And these are some Blandex. So she was dragging her butt after she pooped for a while. So these are Hannah Golan support chews and they're coming a couple different flavors, but we have the peanut butter. It smells delicious. I want to try one, but I have not yet done so. These are her little shoes, which are hilarious to watch her walk in when she first puts them on for a while. This is a thunder shirt because she is terrified of thunderstorms and gunshots and all the things for some reason. And uh, thank you to the McMullen family who sent this out to Piper. And then we have a little bin that's just got her Halloween costume as a giraffe. Her, we call it her puffy coat. 
for our Go Tigers Clemson uh, vest, I mean her jersey, her bandana, and then I'll address these momentarily about the, the gloves, which are, in addition to the combs we have, these gloves work pretty cool too. As you can tell, we have way more things for Piper than we do for Scout because we love Piper way more. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I'm only joking. It's just, we, Piper goes outside, so she has winter clothes and shoes and all the things, and we like to take pictures of her for her Instagram page, the Airstream Adventure Pup. Let's go back to the shower, and I'll show you how we handle Scout in her litter box. All right, moving back here to the shower, this is where we keep Scout's litter box, and this is uh, something that we've played back and forth with. When we were in fifth wheels, there was always a spot somewhere in the rig to put the thing and you don't have to keep it in the shower. But in the Airstream, there's limited places. Some people, you know, use under the bed storage. Some people use under the table storage. Some people use all the kinds of things, but this is what works best for us. If you're taking a shower, it's really simple. We just pull out the box, shower, put it right back in after we squeegee and dry the shower off. So not a big deal. About a year ago, we were visiting with some friends and they had a cat who was a little bit older and they said they were using puppy pads for the cat to use the bathroom. So we gave that a shot and it took a transition period, but we were able to train Scout to use puppy pads and put those in the shower. Now we just coat the bottom of the shower and she does her business right on the puppy pads. She scrapes at it, but really she's just folding it over on itself. And then we throw that away and then put another puppy pad in. It's very, very simple. And it keeps me from having to step on cat litter all the time in the rig, which drives me nuts. At the moment, we are back to litter because while we were hiking the Appalachian Trail, Scout was with my sister who has other cats, so she got used to using a litter box again. So we are transitioning back to the puppy pad. All right, in our shower here, so the light switch, uh, we have these door, what's this thing called? Door buddy. This is a door buddy. Yeah, those come with the door buddy. Okay, so the door buddy keeps the door open enough for Scout to get in, but closed enough so Piper doesn't come in here and eat what we call tutu rolls, because she tends to like those like some dogs do, for what reason we don't know. But this comes with a door buddy so it doesn't shut itself. And the door buddy is very simple. It's just a, a double-sided tape here that holds this on, and double-sided tape here that holds this on, and this is adjustable so you can adjust it. But it keeps the door closed, and a scout can come in here to her. What we have set up now is the litter box and we will get rid of this litter box as soon as she transitions fully to the puppy pad. So what we initially had to do was just take a standard standard uh, litter box. We put a puppy pad in it and fill it full of cat litter. Over time, over the course of a few weeks, we just diminished down the size of cat litter to almost what it is now. So we're very, very soon, we're just going to put a little bit of cat litter on the bottom and she will use the puppy pad. Then we will transition and take the top off of it. So it's just that inside there. And then we will transition to none of this with a little bit of cat litter on top of a puppy pad laying in the bottom of the shower. So that's the transition process. And her food is up here. We had to get a bigger water bowl, so that's why she has this giant food bowl in here. But she hops up on here, eats, does her business. We clean it out once a day, once every other day. It's really easy when the puppy pad's in here because you come up here, uh, fold it right up, throw it away. And if she does have an accident, which happens on occasion, you can wash it right down the shower. So that's how we handle our cat box inside the RV. So you can see how... Just now, the puppy pad, and she has peed on the puppy pad, and she crumpled it up, but we just pulled it over. She will use it again. One other thing we have for Piper are these gloves with these knobs on them. I don't remember right off the top of my head the brand name of them, but we had them for a while. So in addition to the, the comb and the regular brush, we have these gloves. And I like to just get her out there and rough her up with these gloves because she gets all zoomy and excited and it gets the hair off. So this is something you can use daily. Um, just kind of rub her down. She likes to be touched. So it's a, it's a good touching thing and it's a good spend time thing with. You have to brush her as a golden almost every day. And these also work on Scout too. Scout doesn't like to be touched that much. She'll tolerate it for just a few minutes and then after that she's going to be mad about it. So uh, these work for both animals, particularly for Piper, but for both.
that's 30 seconds of rubbing scalp. A couple more things about pets and how we travel with Piper and Scalp. So this is the lead. It's a standard yard lead. It comes with the corkscrew type deal. You screw into the ground. I don't even know where that thing is because we typically just put one in this around a tree or a stump. But right here in your airstream, right between, if you have a double axle, between both tires, there's a shock right there. And I can loop it around one of those, uh, the shock that's right here between the tires. And then she can run around the yard right here, stay kind of in the yard space as it is. Uh, work tying around a tree works well. You can tie it around your stabilizer jacks. There's a number of ways you can do this. The one thing I don't like about this one is the, when these get rained on, they get pretty stiff, so you got to keep them kind of lubricated. And this wire does not roll up nice and pretty like some others do. So I had uh, some friends out the other day, and they had paracord. I call it 550 cord. And they made a dog leash out of that stuff, and it was fantastic. So it was like a normal shoelace, like a thicker shoelace, basically. Super, super strong. Uh, that they use so that collapses down much better than this one does but I'll try to find that other one but I'll put this one on our Amazon page as well. This is just a collapsible dog bowl for water and food when we're out. Uh, we have one that's a camping model too that goes a really nice like almost the size of a wallet uh, but this is an Airstream branded one from the Airstream Supply Company but you can get these kind of anywhere. When we're in the truck with Piper we put so this end goes into a seat belt and this end hooks on to her vest which I'm holding so it's a seat belt uh, we had we've known some folks who had an accident with their dog and the vehicle and the dog went flying people stayed safe uh, so we, Piper wears a seat belt whenever we travel now this one is just a rough wear harness so this fits over her head so this goes on the back and then this clips around in her arm and clips in here on the other side and the harness hooks up here. When we travel the harness hooks down here as a uh, seat belt mechanism but this thing is very sturdy and it's nice because instead of using her collar to, to carry her around on the lead with or a leash it hooks up here so when she spins and does her things it doesn't get tangled around her feet which is what I like about this but it also doubles as a uh, car safety harness. Pet taxi is just Cout's uh, bed box carrier. So this thing unsnaps all the way around. And this top half sits and nests right into the bottom half. So this stays in a full board of my truck when not in use and just goes uh, broken down so I can put things inside it. So we typically just lay it in the full board and the back seat behind the passenger side full board. So it sits there with other animal toys in it until we need to use it. And then she sits up on the seat facing forward and Piper's in the seat beside her, and sometimes she's on the floor, so it really depends on what we're carrying and what we're doing. But Scout travels well, so uh, for both of them, they both travel very well. And what I recommend to you is, if you get a new dog or a new cat, please put them in the car and take them somewhere often, because if they don't do it for so many years, and you put them in the back seat or in the very back, and you're driving all over the place, they're going to get sick. Scout has gotten sick a number of times, I mean like a handful of times, less than a handful, two or three times, and all the miles we've driven and all the miles Butter's driven before we met, but uh, as long as she's facing forward with some airflow, she's typically fine. Piper's never had a problem because Piper's been in the car since she was born, basically, and uh, but they both work very well. Some other items of interest, let me check my list here. Scout is declawed, so we don't worry about her clawing on the furniture in the rig. That's a factor, but she was an old adult cat when we moved into the Airstream. There have been occasions where she's tried to claw, and there was a couple claw marks in one of our old fifth wheels uh, where she got onto the couch. But uh, there, there are ways around that. I'm not a fan of declawing a cat's, but Piper has a bed. She lays on it. It's, we call it her place, but she sits nicely on that, and it's off the ground. And it's a PVC homemade job. Uh, her breeders or her trainers, I don't remember which ones, uh, that came with it so it's, she's something she's had since she was a puppy so she that's her home base color and she really uses it quite well in addition to the uh, traveling bed we had but if if we get another dog ever in the future and we train them they're going to use the collapsible red bed like i showed you that's going to be their place from the, from the get-go so we don't have to worry about carting multiple things around uh water bowls inside the rig 
one thing that's very easily forgotten when you got water bowls in there for the animals before you take off driving down the highway is to empty them. Because I'm sure many of you out there with pets have had water sloshed everywhere from forgetting to empty your water bowl. So one of our habits is on travel day, we put the water bowl out in the very center of the aisle so we have to walk over it every time before we uh, depart the rig. So, because sometimes when we're still sitting up and it's hot outside, we leave them inside and when we get somewhere um, and park for the first time, as we're setting up, we put water up for them. And then we have the collapsible and bowl in the, in the truck along with a big nausea bottle full of water all the time. So that's our travel water for them. Uh, but spilling water in the rig is a big deal. The RV park we're in now has a really uh, something I've never seen before. You have to pay to be a member of it, but if you're full timing in the spots here, paying a monthly fee basically, they make you submit a, your dog's DNA. So you have to swab their cheeks just like you do your own for a 24 me, and they send it off. And if they find dog poop laying around somewhere, they send it off for sampling. If it's your dog, you get fined 50 bucks for not picking up your dog poop. So it's a good thing to keep poop out of the way, but. Um, and a confined space. So I, I'm a fan of that. So there's not just random poops laying around. Veterinarian while traveling. So they both have veterinarians. We've you know, relocated a number of times to kind of a hub area. And we do find veterinarians within that area uh, if we need it. But we keep a copy of all their medical records and all that stuff on our iCloud, on our phone. So at any moment we have to take them to a vet, we can just email the documents right to them and any documents get added from that vet gets added to the document file. So we have a roving electronic uh, pet file. Air tags. So Apple Air Tags, Piper has one on her collar and it works out uh, really well. So we don't, she's never ran away from us, but in the event she is lost or something like that, we more easily find her. Now know that an Air Tag has to be near someone with an iPhone for it to work and track them, but uh, there's they're kind of ubiquitous and Piper's more of a people person than a dog person so she's likely to find people before she is to find animals and be somewhere so the air tag is something that well lets us know where she's at. I do have a seat cover in the truck and in the back of Blair's vehicle we just have a dog bed with a mat underneath and that's fine for her. So here's the seat cover. I have the bottom tucked in but it will hook up here and hook on the back of these seats so that is an option. And this is really nice and very durable and just take it out and shake it out. Really if you remember Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome, some of those have pet restrictions, but most of them we found do not. They just need to know that you have a pet uh, so they can either put their pets up or you know, kind of introduce them the way they should be introduced. And some RV parks, like we were trying to go down to the Florida Keys one time and, and uh, we could not stay at any of the RV parks we wanted to stay at because they had a weight and a size and breed or weight size and breed restrictions so you could only have little dogs and Piper's she's the smallest of the golden retrievers I've ever seen but she's still 65 pounds so anything less anything above like 30 pounds in this park is not not acceptable. One of our absolute favorite things about full timing with pets is no matter where we go they, they are always home and always comfortable same as us. They've been confused, Piper especially, we have too, have been waking up sometimes, don't know exactly know <laughs> where we're going, but um, Piper comes and looks out every morning and sees what's, what the lay of land is before she goes out. But again, they are always home no matter where we go, where we go. So that's a very comforting feature. That's all I have for the moment. If you have any questions about traveling with your pets or how we do something that I may not have answered on this video, please send a comment down below and I will do my best to answer. You're also welcome to email us at 13adventures at gmail.com. Have a great day, everyone, and happy adventures. <laughs>